Hi guys, my name is Kiva and this is DIY with KB. So today, we're making this. Show that babe, show them what we're making. We're making a huge eight foot by eight foot canvas painting. So you say, Kiva, where did you get the canvas from? We're making it, you're gonna learn how to make it. It's super affordable and super easy. This is gonna save you money and time down the road and you can make whatever art you want, but I'm gonna show you how I made mine as well. So if you're interested in that, please keep on watching. But before we get into today's video, please remember to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and check me out on Instagram at kiva.bread. Also, if you're interested in virtual design consulting with me, be sure to click the link down in the description box. Now let's get into today's video. What you're gonna need for the first project is some wood. So I went to Home Depot and I got some pine. So my preferred store is Lowe's, not only because of their values, um, just because their inventory is just almost always superior to Home Depot, but I have Home Depot two blocks from my house. So it's where I happen to go on this day. And I got some select pine, which is 0.75 inches by 1.5 inches by eight feet. So they always tell you that the wood is something different than what it is on the label in the store because they round in the store just so that you can get an idea. But obviously wood comes from the earth and so things aren't always perfect. So just know that. So I got six pieces um, of these planks because I not only need a frame to go like a frame, but I also need support pieces because then the painting will just like collapse on itself and we don't want that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out all my wood on the floor and figure out what size I want my painting to be. I actually um, modeled how I'm going to incorporate this painting into my space on my computer, but I always like to see how things look on the floor to make sure it's actually what I want everything to look like. Um, and my dog is afraid of pie, of wood, so he's over on the other side of the room, but he's okay, so you don't need to worry about him. And I love doing products for you because you can see that even though like I live in a condo, so I don't have like a garage where I can do stuff like this, I'm still able to do projects, which means that you are too. Um, and I know some of you are so intimidated by products, but you kind of just like got to do it. And all of that to say, you guys should also do projects and you're always welcome to message me about it if you have any questions. So what I went ahead and did is I looked at all the pieces of what I got. I got six pieces and I made sure to choose the ones that are the absolute flattest to go around the base um, because that's just really important um, because you don't want um, any bowing of your wood, which happened in my other one. It doesn't bother me, but obviously um, we want to do it to the best of our ability. Now, I am gonna mark where I want my 45 degree angles um, and what I'm gonna need on each side. So to figure out how I was gonna cut my wood, I actually just got my little handy dandy Sharpie and I cut like what the curve would look like. The black is representing dead space and then how I would need this one to look. So now I'm going to measure that space and then get to cutting. So since I want 45 degree angles, but I was kind of unsure as to how to measure them, what I did is I got my miter saw and I just lined up my wood to the two and then I cut it from there. So that is a way to make sure that everything is aligned even if I don't measure it correctly. So I'm just gonna do that for all of these pieces and then go from there. It just took me literally like 45 minutes to figure out how I wanna make these angles, but these are the angles that I made. So I'm gonna make them all the way around so it fits just like a frame there. I cut this one down here. I'm gonna do that all the way around and I'm just using the um, numbers on my saw for a measurement. I'll be honest, I got really confused. Yeah, I have my glasses on the outside of my safety goggles because um, it doesn't matter about the safety if I can't see and vice versa. So we gotta rock them both, um, but I'm gonna keep cutting and then we're gonna put it together. I know that this is taking a long time, but these things do. So I cut all of my angles and somehow I did it right. Um, it did take me a ridiculously really long time, but now babe is home. So she's gonna help me. So what yeah. you normally do is you get some wood glue to glue together and then nail it. But wood glue takes like a while to dry and I'm extremely impatient. So I'm gonna go in with my Gorilla Glue hot glue and then I'm gonna nail them in with these one and a half and quarter um, common nails. That actually might be too short. Okay, I'm just gonna start over here because this is as far as my glue gun extends. Um, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue right here. Not too much because again, I'm going in with nails and I'm just setting it on a paper plate. 
and then I'm joining the edges together. There is a slight gap, which again will be remedied with the nails, but also I don't care because you're not going to be able to see it. Um, but now after I hot glued everything, we're going to put the nails in. Oh my God, this nail is not right. Look at this. I found one of our favorite nails. I'm using one and a half inch nails. I'm going to hammer on all the sides. Then I'm going to put support pieces in, but it's probably going to take me an hour to do it. So, so does luck. Oh. <laughs> my finger one time so look at me I'm doing one nail all the way around because the hot glue worked really well you guys are always coming me for hot glue it's not just standard hot glue it is gorilla glue hot glue and they sell it at Walmart anyway I thought I needed babe's help to do this but I don't so look at me so, because I don't have a table to do this on, which I would if I was like a professional, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I have these paper plates. Um, don't think that. I don't care about the environment. I, we had a party and we actually only have enough plates for four people to eat in our home because we're very unfriendly. Um, so I'm working on that. But hot glue on the floor? No. Ooh. So I'm going in from the sides with my hammer. I'm going to need counter pressure, babe. Winner, are you gonna give me counter pressure? <laughs> so now that all the nails are in, we need to make like the middle support because this thing will fall in real quick. So we're just taking one of the extra pieces of what I have. I'm just going to mark it with my pencil here. Do you, did you hear that? The whole house shook. Poor <laughs> me. I'm marking it right there. I'm gonna cut it and then I'm just gonna nail it in and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. So now I have to drill in these ones. I actually never use a drill myself because I'm not very strong, um, but babe doesn't want to help me. So I'm going to try. All right, let's go in the right direction. So I've done nothing so far. <laughs> ah! All right. This drill is heavy. It's as heavy as the dog. Okay guys, it's been many hours and this is what it looks like. This one is crooked because we didn't measure it, but it's actually surprisingly sturdy because last time it was like buckling when it was like this. And we did these off of one another because we wanted to do nails like in this way and this way. And we could only do that if they weren't perfectly aligned. Here's babe. There's the dog. He had a play date today. He had a blast. So I'm happy about that. If you live in Pittsburgh and you have a dog and you want a doggy date, DM me. But I'm going to do it with this medium duty canvas drop cloth from Home Depot. They have them at Walmart, but our Walmart was out and they are cheap at Walmart, but this was, was $23. Um, so we're just going to take this, lay it on the floor, lay that on top, and then staple it with a staple gun. Now that it's stapled, we are trimming it. Well, I'm not trimming it because I can't use scissors. But Babe is trimming it down so that it can like fit on the wall. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so I just finished putting on the spackle and this is what it looks like. So it dries white and I always buy the pink spackle. I always buy the pink smackle because because it dries white, it lets me know when it's actually done because I'm very impatient and I definitely start projects before I'm ready. Um, so this is the color. It's going to be white when it's done and it'll have all that texture and we're just going to let it dry standing up and then I'm going to go in and paint it tomorrow with this paint PBG Diamond pure white base paint. I wasn't even showing you. So this paint, just because it was affordable, it's a whole gallon of paint and it's white, which is exactly what I need. Like 
Okay, so this is what it looks like after a day of painting. There's tons of texture, but I feel like I want to add some color to it. I'm not happy with just the white because unless you're standing up close, you can't see this immense amount of texture, which I love, but like it's going over there. And like, who's gonna stand on the couch to look at my painting? That's weird. I don't want anyone to do that. But let me step back and show you how big it is. There she blows. She's huge. So it's gonna require moving around the living room. Therefore, I have to love what we're doing to move it around. Okay guys, so it's like day three or whatever. My painting is finally done, so now we're gonna hang it. Yeah, Kiva, have you moved around the house again? Of course. But well, we're about to hang it. We have our little giant out, which is huge. It's the best ladder ever, look at it. It goes super high and it's very compact to store. Um, and then we're gonna put this painting up and then we're going about our days. Um, but I'm really excited. We tested the painting and I really like it. Um, now I'm gonna turn off the audio because it's just gonna be me and babe screaming at each other, trying to get the nails at the right level. But let's do it. Okay guys, so the painting is up and before I show it to you and reveal the space, I'm gonna show you how much this whole project costs. So as you know, I already had paint at home for some of the things. I ended up getting one gallon of paint and I used the whole thing and that was $23. Then I got the canvas, which was $20, and then I got six pieces of pine, which were $6 each, which was $36. So this entire project was super affordable. The painting is eight feet by eight feet. So think about how much a 36 by 48 painting costs at a store like Restoration Hardware or Pottery Barn, and then think about how this whole project costs under $100. I'm so excited to show you. I haven't finished dialing it yet, but now you guys are gonna know how to get amazing high-end looking art for absolutely no money. So let's go check it out. For reference, I'm standing next to it. My sofas are 96 inches long, and this is how it looks. It's huge. I actually bought a picture light to go above it. I'm not sure about that one yet, so I don't know if I'm gonna get a picture light. I might also get two like swing arm sconces for either side, but that will come. But for now, I'm so happy with this because since we have lived here, we have really, really struggled with it looking too dark on this side of the room. And now that we have this huge white painting, it looks so bright in here, even with the windows closed. And honestly, when we used to sit over here without this bright painting, you couldn't even see the TV, it was so dark. So I love this. It is abstract, there's so much texture. Come on, come see the texture. Look in there, there's so much texture from the spackle and the dripping paint and everything like that. So it adds some, you know, something interesting to this side of the room without overwhelming you with color. Instead of just white, obviously, I added touches of gray and this gray paint actually is from Hobby Lobby and it was only $2 for the entire pint of it, which is really good and I just, I really love it. It ended up getting heavier than just the wood because we put on a full um, thing of spackling. I think we forgot that in our calculation on the price. But a full thing of spackling, and a full gallon of paint and then some more paint. So it did get heavier, but we were able to hang it um, together. We just hung it by putting, um, what are those things called? The white two things? Two screws. Oh, and um, drywall studs. We used drywall studs and two screws to hang it. And it is in the middle of the wall. We kind of did it by eye because we had to get up so high. I didn't want Babe up there measuring because she was going to fall and break her leg. And then what was I going to do? Because I love her and I couldn't stand to be away from her for you know however long she had to be in the hospital. So. That's what we did, we're really happy with it. Fun fact, our entire house is not level. So when we're trying to level something, it's just like constant arguing because our house is actually like slants both this way and this way. So it's just like a real party here. Um, but let's step back so you can see the whole thing. 
So a major modification we made is we re-added these pillows to the sofa. I don't know if that's gonna stay, and I wanted to make it look a lot more minimalist in terms of the design. So as you see, the two bookshelves that are on either side are no longer there. And instead of having these lamps behind the sofas, they're now on the side. And I wouldn't normally suggest this, but I feel like it works just because our sofas are so deep and the arms are so long. If you don't have that type of sofa, this is going to hang over to like where you sit and then it's gonna be in your way. So I wouldn't recommend that. I might get different lamps, but for now, I really like the black. In terms of coffee table styling, wow, what a surprise. We brought back the other coffee table. We're actually talking to ours right now to get like this situation figured out, but the black one is in my office. So we have the shagreen one back out here and I think it actually really works because again, it's adding texture without being too much color because it's like um, a gray green. Then I have this nice vessel from West Elm. Their sale just ended, but this I think was on sale for like 55 bucks, which I loved. And then I got these two branches, like I said, from Michaels for $18.99 each and then 20% off. Then I also wanted to add some greenery to make it look more earthy. So I got this super moss from Michaels, which I just sprayed with some water. Thank you to Christian Lee. Um, and it made it look a little bit more lively and that's in the Leanne Ford pedestal bowl. And then I just had a nice book here with um, a page open to colors that match, you know, the greenery I have in the space. Plus, I love coffee table books. They're so fun to read and then encourage you to read instead of looking at a screen. So I'm so happy with the space so far. We're gonna get a different rug. I mean, it's gonna be crazy, but we're going a lot more minimalist and clean. Um, and I'm loving that. But yes, it was so easy to make this painting. You saw that. You don't have to make an abstract painting like I did. You can make anything. But I wanted to show you that you can make your own canvas at home and not have to spend hundreds of dollars getting a big one shipped and paying for it and ordering it and waiting for it to come. This took us all of three days and that's just because we're lazy. <laughs> so you can totally do this. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was so fun creating. I'm so happy with how it turned out. If you create it, please be sure to tag me because I'd love to see it. But until next time, have a beautiful day.